What's going on everybody? Michael Anthony back here today with my wife Jen. Today we are going to show you how to create cool and dynamic images using gels. And just like last week's video, whatever I show you how to do here in the studio, you can translate it outside of the studio. Now before we get started real quick, what I want you to understand is that in order to create good images, you usually have to pre-produce the image in your mind. You have to understand what you want to create before you go out and create it. Because if you just take two colors, slap it on a, uh, on a, on a light, and they don't necessarily complement each other or it doesn't complement your model, or what they're wearing, you're not gonna necessarily get great results. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be working with two colors primarily. We're gonna be working, why'd you look at me? I've always I heard you part your lips and then I thought I, I did something breathing. wrong. <laughs> Magenta is gonna be our main color as it's gonna be filling in our shadows and it's gonna be lighting our background. Then we're also gonna be working with orange as a complementary color as kind of a kicker light. Now I'm gonna get into the lighting details in a couple of minutes, but what I want you to understand is that we break these images down and we light them one light at a time, okay? We're gonna do a, vi a video in the future on how to utilize flash and how to get to your shot in less than 30 seconds. But for right now, I want you to take your time, especially if you're practicing this in the studio. Now, the reason why I chose magenta as my primary color is because my model today is going to be wearing green, which on the color wheel is the opposite of magenta and uh, an orange, of course, will complement both of those colors as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change Jen into her outfit and then I'm going to break down uh, my first two lights, my key light and my fill light, and then we're going to go ahead and work our way up from there. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so let's talk about our first two lights right now. First light that we have right here is a five foot Octabox. And this light is ungelled, right? This is gonna be our key light. I wanna have clean light on my subject's face. Now, you might notice right here, I have this light gridded and I have it tilted up to feather it off our model. And that's because intentionally, I want light fall off when we get halfway down her body right here. I don't want it to like wrap around her and light up all of her because again, I'm trying to keep the light off of the background because I don't want the white light, which you know is gonna, um, is gonna dominate any light that has a gel over it, right? Now on the left side right here, we have a uh, Profoto B1 and there is a magenta gel on this light. This gel light right here is designed to actually fill in the shadows on our subject's face right here. So anything that the white light is not touching, this magenta light should be filling in. Now you gotta be really careful here not to overpower your subject uh, or overfill the light, should I say, overfill the shadows with the colored light that you have here, okay? Just be really, really careful to do that because it could take away from the effect that you're trying to achieve. As far as modifiers go, I want a more specular light source right here, so this is just unmodified. All we have on this light right now is the gel itself, but you can consider, if you want the same look but even a little more specularity, you can consider putting a zoom reflector on your light or some sort of a hard reflector, and that'll give you a little bit more shine. So if your if your model is um, wearing any sort of uh, like glittery makeup, it might actually look really nice to put a, a specular light modifier on your light source um, because it could actually create or accentuate some of that specularity. Okay, so let's talk about camera settings for a second. I'm going to be utilizing the Canon R3 with an 85 millimeter on it. I'm going to be at about one 250th of a second because that is my sync speed, and I want to eliminate all the ambient light in this room. And I'm going to be shooting uh, at about ISO 100 uh, and. Uh, and we'll see what we get. So let's go ahead and take this first shot and see how it comes out. Side of you, right there, looking over your shoulder. Hold that right there. Perfect. My butt looks nice. All right, so as you guys can see right here, there's just a little hint of magenta in the shadows. What we're gonna do right now though, is we're gonna create a dynamic light, a kicker light right here, utilizing the MagBots 24 inch. This is the version one, not the version two light because I wanna use the focus diffuser on it. It gives us like a beauty dish type of light. So it's gonna be more hard light on the, uh, the interior and then soft light around the edges, which is kind of perfect for what we're going for. Now on the inside of this light right here, we have an orange gel. That orange gel is obviously gonna provide us some color, some contrast with the, uh, with the magenta fill light. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and throw our background light in here, which is gonna bring the whole shot together. So let's go ahead and get this shot right now with the uh, the kicker light and see what comes out. Looks good. So I'm not getting judged? It's all me. It's all you, it's all you. <laughs> all right, now you can see the shot starting to come together. We got some separation from the backdrop. You can see in the actual ambient exposure, we killed off all the ambient light. So even though this background is blue right here, you're not really gonna see that until we actually throw a little bit of light on it. But what we're gonna do, because we have this magenta fill light that's coming from the front, we're actually gonna add more magenta light to the background right there. So we kind of sandwich her in between the magenta light. See, we're talking about sandwich shots and I'm like talking about sandwich, I guess Sandwich is on my head right now. You're hungry, aren't you? 
Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and sandwich her in between uh, the magenta light sources. We're gonna have that orange kicker right there, and then we have this uh, this ungelled light right here, which is going to um, provide some clean light on her face. So let's go ahead and take this last shot and see how it all comes out together. The light that we're utilizing on the background right here is a Profloto A2. It's got a magenta gel on it, one of the click modifiers. All right, cool. So now the lighting is dialed in. And you can imagine, once you are experienced in doing this, you understand what you want to create in your head, you could probably dial this shot in in a matter of seconds, right? But now we have to actually focus on the image. We want to make this photo a little bit good. Jen's obviously um, an experienced model. And uh, I mean, like Instagram model or like what kind of oh, model? Oh, that. <laughs> She's been modeling for, for a while for me and uh, she obviously knows how, how to dial it in. So, you know, if we're working with a client, we're obviously giving them more direction. But what I wanna do right now to make the shot a little bit more interesting is add a little bit of movement. Typically we'll do that with like a dress or a veil if we're photographing a wedding. We don't have those things right now, but in the studio right here, we actually have this really cool studio fan and we're gonna use that to blow her hair behind her a little bit to give us a little bit of motion in the shot to give it a little bit more of a dynamic and interesting composition. So let's go ahead and get after it. Oh, uh, you look that ass. Look at <laughs> Did you say Sasha Fierce? Yeah. Who's Sasha Fierce? No. No what? Come on. It's a model or something? Model. What? Who's Sasha Fierce? You know, Your hair's going to get caught in that thing. What's going on? It's off. You know, it's not off. It's still spinning. You know, Sasha Can you imagine if that happened on video right now? Well, you know what happened on video? You don't know who Sasha Fierce is. All right, everybody, there you have it. That is how you create dynamic images utilizing gels. Again, do this inside, outside, wherever you want. Make sure that you guys hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and tap the bell for notifications. Thank you all so much. We will catch you on the next one. But who's Sasha Fierce? Oh my gosh. <laughs>